Well, good day, all. Welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist at St. Matthew's Cathedral. To those joining us in person, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. And for those joining us virtually, welcome to you too. We're delighted to be able to share this worship with you. Our service begins, as always, on page 185 of your Green Book of Alternative Services. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also with you, you. Almighty God, to To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and and from from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifices, by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. 
Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 139, and it can be found on page 896. That's Psalm 139, and it can be found on page 896. And we'll say it responsibly by the half verse. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know, you know my, my sitting, sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. And are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips. But that you know, Lord, know it all together. You pass upon me behind and but you press upon me behind and before. And lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave of my dead, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me to turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when, when as yet there was none. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How, how, how great, great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them, them all, my lifespan would need to be my yours. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God! You that thirst for blood, depart from me. me. They speak despitefully against you. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those, O Lord, who hate you? And do I not love those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me. And lead me in a way that is everlasting. And together we say the prayer. God of mystery and power, even our minds and hearts are the veils and signs of your presence. We come in silent wonder to learn the way of simplicity, the eternal road that leads to love for you and for your whole creation. We come as your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us, and in his name. 
As you are able, I invite you to stand for the proclamation of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about we have found him about whom Moses in the, in the law and also the prophets wrote, uh, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? Well, you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, today we encounter a very famous episode from the life of the prophet Samuel. Samuel, of course, we probably know him as the great prophet who leads Israel through its transition from a collection of tribes to a unified monarchy. And Samuel, of course, the prophet who is given the authority to the authority by God to anoint Israel's first king, Saul, and then to correct that, its second king, the great King David. But our reading today from the first book of the prophet Samuel takes us to a much earlier episode in Samuel's life. And so today we hear about the calling of Samuel. We see where his prophetic vocation begins. And this is a story that I think can offer a lot of insight into our own situation. I think many of us are familiar with this story, um, and it has maybe a certain charming sentimental quality to it, right? There's something very nice about young Samuel asleep, here's a voice calling him, and what does he think? He thinks it's his boss. He thinks it's Eli, his supervisor. By the way, I don't know if anyone else can hear that bit, but our heater is on and working hard today, and we've got a bit of clanging coming. So uh, I don't know if that's picked up on camera. I'm sure we can all hear it. Uh, so uh, my apologies, but know that we are warm and toasty here, which is not always the case in this chapel. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. So it, it has a charming sentimentality to it. Uh, I think there's something much more interesting going on in this episode, and I think it actually is uh, holding a message of great hope for us here today. And so I want to look at three things in this text about Samuel. Who Samuel is, what's going on in ancient Israel at this time, and why all this is a cause or hope. So, to begin, let me give you a little background about Samuel. Samuel's entire existence is a miracle. 
His mother, Hannah, has for years struggled to have a child, and she becomes so desperate that she goes to temple and throws herself before God. She makes one of the most heartbreaking prayers, I think, in all of scripture, and she vows that if only God will give her a son, then she will dedicate that son to serving God in his temple all his life. And to give you an idea of how sorrowful Hannah is, how desperately she longs for her son Samuel, we are told that in the temple she loses her words, and through her tears she prays silently, moving her lips, but not making a sound. And Hannah puts on such a spectacle that the priest in charge of the temple, Eli, assumes that she is drunk and showing zero pastoral sensitivity, Eli approaches this distraught woman in the house of God and tells her, lay off the wine. <laughs> well, despite Eli, God hears Hannah's prayer and, gives, and she gives birth to a son who she names Samuel. And Samuel actually means God has heard, because in Samuel, God heard Hannah's desperate prayer. And then, because God answered her, Hannah keeps her promise. And as soon as the child is weaned, he is delivered to the temple and uh, begins to serve the Lord under the supervision of Eli the priest. So that's a little bit about Samuel. And to see the hope in this passage, ironically, you also need to know a little bit about how badly things were going in ancient Israel at this time. And you can actually see maybe the most crucial indications of what's going wrong right in this passage. We are told that Eli is essentially blind, and we are told that Samuel is sleeping in the temple in the very room in which the Ark of the Covenant is contained. And recall, for an ancient Israelite, even in the pre-monarchic days, the Ark was believed to be the place on earth in which, on which the presence of the Lord dwelt. So snoozing nearby the Ark of the Covenant was, to say the least, bad form. And of course, throughout the Bible, as you'll recall, blindness and sleep are very often metaphors for spiritual blindness or spiritual inattentiveness. You can think of how Jesus' disciples fall asleep behind his back while he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest. So in the Bible, if you are caught sleeping, or part of vision, it is usually not a good sign, spiritually. So right off the bat, we are given an, an indication that something is very wrong right at the very heart of ancient Israel's religious institutions. And this is confirmed in the first verse of our reading, when we are told that this is a time in which the word of the Lord is rarely heard, and in which visions are not widespread. So what's going wrong? Well, I want to suggest, following the theologian Robert Barron, that we can look at Eli the priest and his family as a microcosm of a wider rot in the religious life of ancient Israel. Eli himself is clearly no saint. As we saw, he is cruel to Hannah. He may be neglectful as a spiritual mentor to Samuel. Why else would the boy be napping next to the Ark of the Covenant? And he cannot hear the voice of God calling out for Samuel. And Eli's sons are even worse. Eli has two sons, both are priests, and both are awful. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12 says it best. The sons of Eli were scoundrels. <laughs> they had no regard for the Lord or the duties of the priests to the people. And let that be a reminder that when it comes to human folly, and especially to the folly of religious officials, the Bible does not mince words. So I think from looking at Eli, we can extract some insights into what's going wrong. Israel's religious institutions have become powerful, complacent, and corrupt, which is never a good combination. And priests like Eli and his sons, as a sign of this, 
are using their office to exploit the people they are called to serve and to enrich themselves, and in the process, totally disregard the word of God. And as a result, trust in Israel's religious system is falling. So to go back to that concern in the first verse of this reading about the word of God not being heard, it seems clear that the issue is not that God has stopped speaking or abandoned his people. The issue is that without good spiritual leadership, the people are unable to discern the word of God. And this bleak picture is confirmed in the prophecy that Samuel receives when he finally figures out that the voice calling out to him is not Eli, but God. And here is where I'm very, very thankful that our first reader was willing to read all 20 verses and not just 10, because if you only hear the first 10 verses of this reading, you might come away with that warm, sentimental uh, impression of the story. Well, when you hear the prophecy that God is trying to give to Samuel, you realize not quite so sentimental. The prophecy, in short, is one of disaster. God tells Samuel that because of the abuse and corruption of Israel's religious leadership, ruin is coming. Eli and his entire line will be wiped out, and the Ark of the Covenant, Israel's precious link to God, will be stolen by foreign invaders. So that's the scene. That's what's going on in ancient Israel. And again, following Robert Barron, I want to suggest that this situation is in some way a distant mirror that we can hold up to our own church, our own religious institution, our own life as a community of faith. Because not that long ago, we were powerful and complacent and not all that virtuous in every, in, in every way. Not that long ago. And the fruits of that complacency and corruption were very bitter indeed. We can go through the long list, but of course, the most significant sign of our corruption and our abuse of the power and trust that we were given was our disastrous mistreatment of our indigenous brothers and sisters. And what has come as a result of that? Well, any public survey will show you that trust in our public religious institutions that were once the core of our spiritual and communal life, trust in those institutions has plummeted. We're losing people. We're losing resources. So we had power, we abused it, and now we are in the midst of our own troubling situation. So, okay. That's Samuel, that's what's going on in ancient Israel, and that's how I see it as connecting to our own times. Now, you may remember I said something about this being a very hopeful passage and message. So you might be wondering, where, where is the hope in this? This is kind of a bleak picture. Well, I'll tell you where the hope is. Look at Samuel. Even in the midst of corruption and falling trust, and inability to hear the word of God, even in the midst of the failure of the very institutions that are designed to help us know and follow the word of God, even in the midst of all this failure, God is raising up Samuel. God is raising up Samuel in the midst of all that institutional problems. And who does Samuel raise up? Samuel appoint, anoints David, king of Israel. So in the midst of this chaos, God is raising up someone who appoints David, the king of Israel. And who is descended from the royal line of the house of David? Jesus of Nazareth. God is raising up, in the midst of this bleak moment of failure, God is raising up the prophet who will prepare the way for the line that leads to the Messiah. That's where the hope is. And just as God took that brokenness, that institutional failure, and used it to pave the way for Christ coming to the earth, I believe we can take great hope that in the midst of our own institutional troubles and challenges, God is raising up new Samuels among us, new Samuels, who will prepare us not for the coming of the Lord, 
but for his return. And that is very good news indeed. Amen. Amen. Our service continues on page 188 with the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to adopt an attitude of prayer comfortable for you for the prayers of the people. <clears throat> this morning I've chosen litany number seven on page 116. Let us pray in faith to God, our Father, to his Son, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. For the church of the living God throughout the world, let us ask that for the riches of his grace. Lord, Lord hear and, and have mercy. mercy. <clears throat> for all who proclaim the word of truth, let us ask the infinite wisdom of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who have consecrated their lives to the kingdom of God and for the struggling to and for all struggling to follow the way of Christ, let us ask the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. For Charles, our King, for our Prime Minister of this country, and for all those who govern the nations that they may strive for justice and peace. Let us ask the strength of God. The Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For scholars and research workers, <clears throat> that their studies may benefit humanity, let us ask the light of the Lord. Lord, Lord hear and have mercy. For all who have passed from this life in faith and obedience, let us ask for the peace of Christ. Lord, hear and have mercy. Our service continues on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have a mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and with, you. with you. Let us share that peace. <clears throat> peace, everyone. Peace. Jesus shall reign wherever the sun doth its successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no Let us pray. Living God, you have revealed your Son as the Messiah. May we hear his word and follow it and live as children of light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Our service continues on page 196 with Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, 
This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Fraction sentence number two on page 212. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ, the bread of Christ, Christ. Amen. shed for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with the bread from heaven. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us your light may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <clears throat> glory to God, whose, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Now that our service has ended, let us go forth in love to serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God.